Hey friends, how you doing? This is Andy coming to you from AIHQ here in Colorado. Feeling good, feeling happy, feeling very alive and that's a darn good thing. 7.30 in the morning and it's time for me to dole out another cool bass lesson for y'all. I'm going to drop some stuff on you right now that I, I know is going to be real helpful for you. Um, it might be a little bit of a shock, <laughs> but this is some real stuff. And uh, I'm going to call this bass, this, this, this bass lesson, you know, the, the right way to play bass, simply because from my experience in the recording studio and on stage, sometimes the best groove that we can play, the most functional thing that we can play, is the most simple thing that we can play. So I'm going to show you several different examples of, of, of what I mean by that. Now, some of you might have watched my videos like uh, my funky bubbling videos you know where we're talking about ghost noting and um, this kind of and uh, that kind of playing it does have a place but it has to be carefully worked out and it has to fall into a genre into a song and into uh, a format that where it belongs okay when we try and get overly ghosty and do dead notes um, in places where they don't belong it clutters things up particularly in the recording environment it's like it's like putting it under a magnifying glass when you listen back to the track it sounds all messy right because it's uh, and especially when you start um, working with percussion or something like that everything that you do rhythmically it's like looking at it in the mirror when the percussion um, kicks in and all of a sudden it starts to sound real cluttered so here's a few examples of how to clean up your bass lines and to play them as straight as possible using um, using just quarters and just eighths where they um, where they coincide with the with the groove and letting the drummer primarily do all the anticipations and the accents and the shuffling and things like that now here's a here's the first example in boogie woogie piano the the piano player is going they're doing everything with octaves okay That's what the piano's doing. In order for us to groove it the right way and to really make it drive, we should just play quarter notes on that. Okay? Piano's going They're doing all the anticipations, and we're just sticking those quarter notes, right? And if the drummer's got his act together, he's playing quarters on the kick drum. And he's shuffling with his hands, or he's boogieing with his hands. Boom, 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 boom. Now that's just that's just one example, one of the many examples. Another example is on the shuffle on the rock shuffle. You know, like Van Halen, or any of the fast boogie stuff. Um, we 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 might have the tendency to want to go. We might have a tendency to want to go ba da ba da ba da ba da ba da, right? No, 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 no. The thing that's going to groove the hardest is to play straight down the middle. So we have to resist that temptation to 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 want to jump on top of that shuffle feel and get up in the drummer's business and. And, and clutter things up because going straight down the middle is always going to groove the hardest. Now, another example of this is in is in funk. All right. Now, when we start to, to get into ghost noting and, and, and this and that, we uh, right with all this right hand ghost noting. Actually, what grooves the hardest you know, depending on the context, is to, is to not do any of that ghost note and to do something like this. <laughs> it sounds square, right, without the drums there, but when the drummer's getting real busy, that bass line actually sticks the hardest. So, there's a few different examples for you to consider. Oh, another good one is in um, playing country music. You know, the, 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 when I think of the country music, I think of a pendulum. Bing, boom, bing, boom, bing, boom. One, five. Bing, boom, bing, boom. 
boom, bing, boom. We have a tendency to want to go. <laughs> right? Well, no, because that doesn't groove as hard as the pendulum does. Let the drummer do the shuffle and let the drummer do the train beat. Um, you can't lose if you have that attitude. If you have that, if you have that understanding of simplicity and, um, and uh, simplifying your subdivision, you, you can't lose in, 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 a, um, in a fundamental bass playing mindset. There will be plenty of opportunities for you to get funky and to play your ghost notes and do all that kind of stuff. Um, but you just got to know where and when. And I'm telling you, in the recording environment, when you're laying down a track, give the note its value. Play a half note as a half note, play a whole note as a whole note, a quarter and an eighth, and play them even and straight. And don't try and get too cute because uh, it's just going to clutter it all up. The more even and the more simple that you can play and the more fundamental and just get right up on top of every beat and nail your subdivision, the producer's going to love you, it's going to sit in the track perfect, and you're going to get more calls to come back and do more recording sessions and, and, and just more bandstand work because we're bass players and that's the primary job is to do the fundamental work. Alright y'all, there's a little something something for you. Get on out there and play bass right. <laughs>